So moving on with our pre-class discussion. So how about we summarize what have you Atoms are concerned. Okay, that's one aspect. There's a constant. That's Avogadro's number. There's atomic masses. There's also something else. No, no. Well, you're. That's right, but that, that's tied in with Avogadro's number and formula mass. True. Yep. 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 Because it has something to do with the atomic number. Adding them together. No. Valence electrons. Okay. That. Okay. Valence electrons, sort of, but yes. Uh, protons. What else? Neutrons. Neutrons. And. Oh, you mean add them together? Yeah. That? Okay. All right. So, yes, uh, we talked about adding together atomic masses. We've talked about subatomic particles with various atoms. And then how you look at what the mole is. In the simplest, the simplest explanation you could give for the mole is what? Yeah, it's it's just a counting unit that either the the uh, mass of a substance or the mass of that element added together would give you one mole. What goes into moles? Like you know how you measure moles in like inches going to feet or whatever. Mm -hmm. What goes into moles? The molar mass, which is off the periodic table. Okay. 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 So with that one of the aspects that we have not done yet is where all this is going to coincide together with one another and that is dealing with compounds in moles or atoms or molecules or anything to that extent so do you want to start with atoms or do you want to start with grams, grams. okay mm -hmm. so for instance if have hmm three hundred and ten yes okay uh we won't make it too difficult Unless you don't know what sulfuric acid is, but I wouldn't expect that you would have remembered that. Remember, we had said either dealing with how many moles are in an element, but in this case, it's a compound. So if you have 310 grams of sulfuric acid, okay, how many moles would that be? And then ultimately, how many atoms? We can show you that you can split these up into different pieces okay so how many moles and then and atoms okay so there's no setup for this it's just canceling out your factors there's only one place to start and that's 310 So if we have 310 grams of sulfuric acid, so since we know what sulfuric acid is, we can abbreviate that because the formula for it is right here. Now that's going to get to be, let's say, more and more common that as we go further into this curriculum, rather than writing H2SO4 every time, maybe you have aluminum nitrate, which would be 
this. You don't have to write that out each and every time. As long as you know what the formula is, you can just say, I almost said L. You can just say AN for aluminum nitrate. If you choose to take a shortcut, that's fine, just as long as you know what the formula is. In this case, we do. So, we have grams on top. How do we get rid of that gram? Okay. So, in this case, is your molar mass. Okay. Here's mole. Here's mass. Hence, a molar mass. So then... Just from doing this over and over and over again, I know that this is 98 grams. Oops, I don't need to uh, be redundant with that, do we? Okay. I hear screeching. I hear this. Okay. All right. So, again, we could break this up into pieces, and that's what we're doing here. Or if you just if we didn't have to find moles, we can do this all in one step. And it's just the same thing. Now, you don't need to write this second part down unless you're looking at this and saying, I am confused. Okay? So in this case, we're gonna skip, well not skip, but get all the way over to atoms in three <coughs> steps. Okay, so this is still the same. Okay, so in this case, we're converting this to moles, and what do we get? 310 divided by 98 is 3.16 moles of salt. Oops. Sulfuric acid. So now, how do we get from moles to atoms now? Are we sure? Yes, you do, but I want you to know why that's right. So for every mole of sulfuric acid, how many atoms would you have? Okay, so here we could take 3.16 times 2, second above the 7, change it to your function of exponent, you should get 1.90, of course that's atoms sulfuric acid. Okay. Well, what about if you had to answer how many atoms there were and you don't want to break that up into pieces? Well, notice that we already know that this divided by each other is going to be 3.16. Okay. It doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to see that that's where that would end. And in that next step, that you multiply. So down here, if we had a mole of sulfuric acid, well then you're going to take that times six point Avogadro's number. I want to write that A all the time. Okay. You might not get 1.90 exactly, but I would think it would have to be pretty close. And does anyone need a refresher on how to punch in? Uh, I must, I got to the 22nd. I must have punched something in wrong. One zero.
Is this, this isn't right, is it? It should be the exact same. Did I do the three? Yeah, I got that. Oh, I know what I did wrong. For a physical science problem, I had 3.10. Just a coincidence. It's 310. Now I bet you that we will get that 310 instead of 3.10. All right, 1.90. Again, the, uh, the uh, decimals here might be just a little off, but you're going to get the same answer. Okay. Question. Yes. How come you didn't put the SA with the 98G? Oh, here? Yeah, okay. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. That's just paying attention. That's what that is. Okay, so you get the same answer in both cases. Yeah. All right, so front, middle, front, right. Okay, middle, and back. I am on the bus. Okay. <clears throat> so I saw some of this out here. Um, what part of this is, and I don't know if we're having problems with this, just throwing more examples out there, I don't know if there's really an answer. Is there anything out there that is just confusing that's just not making sense? I think it's just, so, no, I like, think where just you put it. Practice. I feel like, okay. um, yeah, I feel like practice is work, but, like, multiplying and dividing, like, it's hard to prove to me that, like, you know, what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Okay. Which I just wow. about, like, yeah. Combined. yeah. It's because you want to like you don't know where it's like starting a brand new table because mm -hmm. the three point one six is always going to start on the top. Yeah. So to find the atoms, you take the moles. And the reason why you put the moles on the bottom. Well, it's it's not where you always want to say is the atoms always going to be on top? Is the atoms always going to be on the bottom? You don't want to view it that way. You want to find or decipher what am I starting with and how do I cancel that out? That's what you want to do. Yes? So in these, these like, I'd say two-step problems, so you'd start by finding out the mole, and then, they, then you go to the atom. So you take the mole times uh, Avogadro's number, and then you take the... To find the atoms, you find the, you take the, the grams times the Avogadro's number. In other words, going backwards. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Wait, so it's the 98 from the acid you Yes, to this to is the atomic mass of all that added together. Okay. That, whole, that whole thing is one mole? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. So one of the aspects that maybe uh, we, we, we're telling you to visualize this in your head, and that would be as follows, okay? <clears throat> maybe if we had, um, since this is the most common one that I always use, if you have... 32.06 grams of sulfur. How many moles is that? Are present, I suppose. Okay. So what happens, this is the only place you can start, 32.06 grams of sulfur. And the molar mass for sulfur is 
what? Okay, so for every mole, you have 32.06. Okay, so that's why in this step, that's going to be for one mole because the, you're putting your atomic mass down there. Of course, these then cancel, and 32 divided by 32 would give you just. So if we kept on going and say, well, how many atoms would that be? You're just going to get Avogadro's number. Yep. If you have a really good understanding, you would say, yeah, I think that's got to be right. It's going to be Avogadro's number. Okay? Because even if you multiplied this by... I'll just put Avogadro's number here, 6.022. Even if you multiply that, yep. you're still dividing by 32.06, where that's going to cancel each other out. I'm going insane. Okay. But I do understand that. The downside, well, I wouldn't say downside, but what's easy to do is, well, one, if you're in a hurry, and two, well, chances are if you're in a hurry, you're just not going to be able to see some of the silly mistakes that can be made. So what I mean by that is, hmm, we are talking about this earlier, expanded and condensed structural formulas. Sure, I'm sure you want to see that when it comes to organic chemistry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. No. Okay. So Okay, that is a polyunsaturated fatty acid. That's an or organic molecule. But the point we're trying to make is, I, I doubt we'll have you do anything this complex for adding together. Perfect. It looks like it's pretty complex, but it's probably not terrible. Yeah. It just looks like it's intimidating. Okay, the reason we say that is, how many of you do one element at a time? So what I mean by that is, okay, we read left to right, we're starting with our carbons. So here's one. How many are inside this parenthesis? No, there's ten. Okay, so now we're up to eleven. Then how many more? Seven more gives you eighteen. And then 19. Sorry? Five, five, one, seven, and one. So eight, 18, 19. Okay? So then, of course, you do this. Okay? Then, of course, you go with your hydrogens now. Let's just do this so we don't get them confused. We got three. Okay. We've got 10. We've got 14. And one more. So, fif so 15. 25. 28. And that would give you a certain number. Then we got the element. What's our next element? Oxygen. And how many is there? Okay. Then our next element. Our next element. <laughs> there is not. Yeah, it's just those three. Yeah. Okay.
Now, in in case you're wondering why why would it be important to find the number of atoms in a compound, other than just saying, oh, we're just trying to make I wouldn't say trying to make this more difficult, but an application for that might be um, maybe in a con not a condensed area, but a room like this. Maybe there's a critical level of, let's say, carbon monoxide. It might be something that's in parts per million. So you might have a sniffer, and I think that's what you would call it. It's analyzing the parts per million of carbon monoxide, and that would certainly be relevant to that of Avogadro's number. Okay. So are we good with these types of problems, or you think you need one more? Okay. You do. You get. See, I like how you said that. We get one. We deserve one. Yes. What? Um. Well, why don't you look at this? Is I just keep reverting back to this. Look at what you wrote down. Okay. Okay. Oh, they're easy. Are they really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're fairly simple. Now, you, you have to be able to wrap your head around this. When we're talking about molar mass, it's measured in this, a mole per mass, or it's measured in this. Okay? It depends upon what it is that you're starting with. If you're starting with the substance in grams, so we'll keep this, uh, really, since we talk about carbon monoxide, we'll say if you have 0 0.85 moles of carbon monoxide, atoms are grams grams okay so how many grams is this okay so there's only one place to start 0 0.85 we're just going to get this started and then for those of you who want this extra practice go ahead and finish this out You don't need to have the awkward silence, so I'll just go ahead and hit pause here. So do Okay, so to wrap this up, so for every, uh, what is that, 28? Okay, so whatever it is, you multiply that out. Now, remember we said these are the same thing, it just depends upon what you're starting with. Because if we were to say, if you have 40 grams of hydrochloric acid, which is HCl, how many moles is that? That's entirely up to you if you want to do this. Okay, so very quickly, how would you wrap this up? Multiply it. Maybe. You're starting with 40. You divide it. So HCl, then in your next step, is it the top or bottom one of those conversions? Uh, bottom. It's the bottom one. Bottom. So that's why we said these, it's the same those are both molar masses. It just depends what it is that you're starting with. Don't memorize if I start with moles, well then grams has got to go on top. Don't memorize that because you're, you're saying the same thing when you're dealing with your 
velocity formulas. You're going to say, well, this is what the formula is. Well, how about if I just memorize this? Or if I do, uh, why would you want to do that? But this, this is the formula that you learned, right? Yeah. Why try to memorize all that? But to, but to me, and if that works, that's fine. Because you can but still plug it in no matter what. That formula is always going to work. You don't have to memorize the different parts of it. You just have to manipulate the variables. Okay. Did anyone get an answer for this if you chose to do it? I'm scared to say my answer. Wait, what was the was it 23.80 grams? Oh, 0.85 times 28.01. Top one is 23.81. Bottom one is 10 point, or I. Wait, what was the top one? 1.0. One zero. Okay. Yeah, that'll work too. Okay. Oh, so you're finding oh you're finding those two? Oh. oh. Alright. So that's all I have. We'll catch up to you next time. Paper will be handed out and then you'll receive your second one tomorrow.